Chapters 8 and 9 cover the first six trumpets. Chapter 8, verse 1 to 6, is about the opening of the seventh and last seal which holds the seven trumpets. The remaining verses of chapter 8 cover the first four trumpets. In the a, in a seal judgments, the first four judgments are grouped together and are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Like the seal judgments, the first four trumpets are marked off from the last three. We will, we will see how they are different from the other three. Here's a memory aid for those who speak Mandarin. Chapter 8 is about trumpets. Trumpets in Mandarin is La Pa, and it sounds like Pa, the number 8. Chapter 9 covers two more trumpets. Like the seal judgments, there is also an interval between the sixth and seventh trumpet. The seventh trumpet coming only at the end of chapter 11. We saw in the previous session that the seven trumpets came out of the seventh seal. Now the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound them. Remember the four angels holding back the four winds of the earth in chapter 7 verse 1? The judgments that the four wind angels held back are judgment on the earth, the sea, and the trees. And they parallel only the first two trumpet judgments. What these four angels held back are the first two trumpets, or the start of the trumpet judgments. Now that the 144,000 Jews have been sealed, the trumpet judgments begin. The first sounded, and there was hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled to the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. The second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was hurled into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood, and a third of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The star is named Wormwood and a third of the waters become, became one wood, and many people died from the waters because they were made bitter. First trumpet, hail and fire with blood thrown to the earth. Second trumpet, a burning mountain thrown into the sea. Third trumpet, a burning star fell onto rivers and springs. The fourth angel sounded. Chapter 8, verse 12. And a third of the sun, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars were struck, so that a third of them would be darkened, and the day would not shine for a third of it, and the night in the same way. Darkness over a third of the sun, moon, and stars. Is this a one third lessening of light? But one third of the day and night would not shine. Does it mean no light? And does it mean that a third of the day and night would be plunged into total darkness? But nights are already dark. So what does it mean that the night would not shine? Let's review the first four trumpets. First trumpet, hail and fire with blood thrown to the earth. Second trumpet, burning mountain thrown into the sea. Third trumpet, burning star fell into the waters. Fourth trumpet, darkness over a third of the sun, moon and stars. Let's consider the effects of the first four trumpets. Hail and fire with blood thrown to the earth. What is it? It could be an electrical storm 
with lightning causing fires resulting in one third of the earth burn up, one third of trees burn and all grass burn up affecting livestock, meat and milk products. Second, a, burn a burning mountain thrown into the sea. It could be an active volcano or a landmass that is on fire from the first trumpet sliding into the sea and causing a tsunami that destroys ships and sea creatures die causing the sea to turn into blood. The sea could refer to the Mediterranean Sea. Third, a burning star fell into the water. It could be an asteroid falling toward the earth causing a chemical change in the atmosphere and polluting one third of all lakes, rivers and underground springs and indirectly impacting men when they drink the water. Pollution of fresh water impact on fish, vegetation nearby, men die when they drink the water. A darkness over a third of the sun, moon and stars. The asteroid hitting the earth may cause the earth to, spring, to spin faster so that we have shorter days and nights. One third of 24 hours would be 8 hours shorter than the standard 24 hours. A longer period of darkness would affect nature, for example plants dependent upon the sun for life and energy. And then a longer period of darkness will also lead to an increase in crime and wickedness because of people capitalizing on the darkness. The effects of the first four trumpets affecting one third of the earth seas and river, rivers and one third of the day and night have never happened before in history. Another reason to adopt the futurist view of the book of Revelation. The House of the Four Trumpets John is telling us what God is going to do, not how he's going to do it. Even when we cannot explain the trumpet judgments, within the laws and forces of nature. Recognize that God is doing all of this. Now, though, though God generally operates within the laws and forces of nature, He occasionally breaks them. And there are examples in the Old Testament. In Joshua, the sun stood still, meaning, meaning time stood still. Joshua 10, 13. In Hezekiah, Hezekiah and Isaiah, time went backwards. 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 9 to 11, Isaiah 38, verse 8. The fundamental question is this. Will you believe, even if you cannot find a reasonable explanation for the house of the judgments? The first four trumpets are marked off in the last three in that the first four plagues or trumpets are entirely inflicted directly on natural objects, the earth, trees, grass, sea, rivers, lights of heaven, but not directly on men. Nevertheless, human lives are impacted indirectly. For example, many died as a result of drinking the bitter water. Then I looked, and I heard an eagle flying in mid-heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, 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 to those who dwell on the earth, because of the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. What is the purpose of this proclamation? It is a warning of judgment. The eagle or angel announces the last three trumpet judgments are woes, they are especially bad because now men are directly targeted and tormented. It is a warning of judgment. It is also a message of hope for all who would repent and turn to God. But sad to say, many did not. Chapter 9, verses 20 to 21. 
Chapter 9 Now we come to the trumpet judgments that affect men directly. Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star from heaven which had, which had already fallen to the earth, and a key of the bottomless pit was given to him. The fallen star is a person or an angel. To this star is given the key to the bottomless pit, and the star is called a him, a personal pronoun. The star is also seen performing the actions of a person. He opens the abyss. Verse 2. He opened the bottomless pit, and smoke went up out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by the smoke of the pit. The smoke polluted the air and darkened the sky, which had already been darkened when the fourth trumpet sounded. And then... Then out of the smoke came locusts upon the earth, and a power was given them, as the scorpions of the earth have power, and their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings a man. They have tails like scorpions and stings, and in their tails is the power to hurt men for five months. Hurt only the men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads, not permitted to kill but to torment for five months, and in those days men will seek death and will not find it. Do you think these locusts will afflict other believers, those without the seal of God on their foreheads? Since only the 144,000 Jews have a seal on their foreheads, all other believers without the seal will be afflicted. The entire human race, including all those who have become believers during the tribulation, is open to demonic affliction. Note that demonic creatures would want to afflict believers. It also shows that God permits evil to carry out his own purposes. As Martin Luther, the great reformer, said, even the devil is God's devil. The devil is an instrument in the hands of God. But again we see God's mercy limiting the torment to five months. People have the opportunity, the time, to repent of their sins. The pain is so intense that men wish for death. Many think that death is an escape, but death is not the end. This, this Torment by the locusts is a foretaste of the torment in the lake of fire at the final judgment at the great white throne judgment. The locusts have faces like men, hair like women, thief like lions, breastplates like that of iron, wings like the sound of chariots rushing to battle and tails like scorpions with stings. What are they? What are they? Are they a new species of locusts? Or are they de demon-possessed locusts? Note that the bottom bottomless pit was previously locked and is evidently of great temperature. Natural locusts would not be able to survive in that environment. There is a speculation that what John saw were soldiers with gas masks and bayonets arriving in helicopters? Or are they swarm of attack drones? I think it is unnecessary to try to spiritualize these symbols or to in interpret them in a light of modern means of warfare. John is heaping image upon image to force us to feel the horror of this judgment. They are most likely fallen angels imprisoned in the bottomless pit until it is time for God to use them as one of his instruments of judgment upon the ungodly world. The fifth trumpet brings locusts up from the bottomless pit. They, the locusts, have as king over them the angel of the beast, 
His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in the Greek, he has the name Apollyon, which means destroyer. Question. Is this king the same as the fallen star in chapter 9, verse 1? This is the end of the first war, and two more still to come. A voice from the four horns of the golden altar say, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates, who have been prepared for the hour and day and month and a year, so that they would kill a third of mankind. The four fallen angels appear to be bound in a watery abyss at the Euphrates River. They apparently have control of the demonic army of 200 million with tails like snakes and heads like lions. These angels were ready for a specific assignment at a specific year, month, day and hour in history. These specific details highlight the preciseness of God's divine plan. Among the angelic hosts, we have good angels and fallen angels. We will see later that a third of the angels fell with Satan. The good news is that for every demon, there are two good angels. Some of these fallen angels are on the loose from Genesis through the tribulation. Some are confined permanently till the day of judgment, some temporary. We read about Jesus binding these demons during his earthly his ministry on earth. Some of these will be released during the tribulation. Example, the locusts in chapter 9. We will read about the 1,000 year confinement of Satan during Christ's millennium rule, after which he will be cast into the lake of fire. Reading Revelation 9.16 in the NIV, the number of the mounted troops was twice 10,000 times 10,000. I heard their number. This is an army of 200 million. What is the connection between the four fallen angels and the army of 200 million? The four angels stir the army to go to war. No mention of where the army of 200 million came from. China, with the largest active army in the world, has about 2.2 million in 2020. This is only 10% of 200 million. Because the number 10,000 times 10,000 is often used as an innumerable number, some have held that this should not be understood as a literal number. Whether the number is literal or not, it is a massive military force that kill a third of mankind. The riders had breastplates the color of fire and of hyacinth and of brimstone, and the heads of the horses are like the heads of lions, and they have tails like serpents, and out of their mouths proceed fire, smoke, and brimstone. Many will be killed by these three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur. How many will be killed? How many were killed? Earlier, one-fourth of the Earth's population is killed in the fourth seal. Now, one-third of the remaining population of mankind is wiped out. This means the Earth's total population is reduced by half by these two judgments alone. By today's standards, that will be about 3.5 billion people. Compared, to, compared with the deaths during the World Wars, World War I, 17 million deaths, and about 60 million deaths in World War II, which was about 3% of the then world population, estimated at 2.3 billion. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands so as not to worship demons and the idols. And they did not repent of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their immorality, nor of their thefts. Nothing is sacred anymore, not life, not marriage, nor, nor property and rights of others. One would think by this time men would be crying out for mercy from God in deep repentance, especially since the world know that all these happenings are judgments from God. But no, 
those who survive are declared to be unrepentant. Such is the hardness of the human heart, even though faced by worldwide destruction and divine judgment from God. Why are men so openly and unashamedly worshipping Satan? Men continue to worship demons and idols and involved in sorceries and immoralities. Why still unrepentant? John 3.19 This is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and men love the darkness rather than the light. For the deeds were evil, for everyone who does evil hates the light, and does not come to the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But he who practices the truth comes to the light, so that his deeds may be manifested as having been wroth in God. Let's do a quick review of the sealed judgments. The first four sealed judgments are also known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Jesus called these four signs, false Christ, wars, famine, and death, the beginning of birth pangs in Matthew 24. Seal 5, the martyrdom and many more will be killed for their faith. In Revelation chapter 7, John has a proleptic vision of a countless multitude coming out of the tribulation. Seal 6, cosmic and earthly ph phenomena. Mountains and islands will be moved out of their places and men acknowledge this as judgments of God. Yet they are unrepentant. The first four seals are birth pangs. The seventh seal, that is the seven trumpet judgments, intensify the seal judgments. Trumpet judgments. The first four trumpet judgments are inflicted directly on nature and the natural order of things. The earth, trees, grass, sea, rivers, likes of heaven. One third of all these will be impacted. Trumpet number five, demonic locusts attack men without the seal of God on their foreheads. Jewish and Gentile believers other than the 144,000 Jews will not be exempted. Trumpet number six, a demonic army that will wipe out a third of mankind. Unimaginable number of deaths, 3.5 billion based on present world population. Application questions. How does your view of your life change when you see it through the lens of a battle with Satan? Today, the church is not exempt from spiritual attacks as 1 Peter 5 8 shows. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour, to destroy your relationship with God. Now, we do not want to swing to the extreme of attributing all things, especially bad happenings, to the devil. What we perceive as good things may come from the devil to draw us away from God. These are Christ's words to the church in Laodicea. Revelation chapter 3 verse 17. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire, so that you may become rich, and white garments, so that you may clothe yourself, and that the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed, and eyes, eyes self to annoy your eyes, so that you may see. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. Therefore, be zealous and repent. How do we discern if our pursuits and circumstances in life are from the devil? We will be looking at the many names of Satan which will indicate his strategies. But for now, recognize his values. Satan is the prince of this world. I define the world as a, the system of evil spirits and unbelievers under the control of Satan with beliefs and values that are contrary to the word of God. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 
Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world, and the world is under the control of Satan. Probably, all of us know 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 16. We have read the verses, heard messages preached, but do we listen? Be careful that you do not refuse to listen to the one who is speaking. For if the people of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to Moses, the earthly messenger, we will certainly not escape if we reject the one who speaks to us from heaven. We have the word of God, God speaking directly to us through the writers of the New Testament. The kingdoms of Israel and Judah did not listen. Therefore they, the cho God's chosen people, did not escape. They had to face God's discipline. I will stretch out my hand against Judah and against all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, those who have turned back from following the Lord and do not seek the Lord or inquire of Him. Some of you may say, I do follow and worship the Lord. But are you pursuing the world at the same time? We have read Zephaniah 1, 4a and 6. What does verse 5 say? Those who bow down on the roofs to the hosts of heavens, and those who bow down and swear to the Lord, and yet swear by Milcom. Again, you probably know about the fall and exile of the kingdoms of Israel and Judah. You have read about it and heard messages preached. But have you taken it to your heart? You may not have because till now your life has been one smooth journey. The discipline of the Lord will be painful and it can be very painful. He loves you. And He knows that your spiritual life is more important than your physical life and he will do all that is needed to bring you back to him and all that is needed can be very painful how would the reality of spiritual warfare and the inevitable judgment of God change the way you make decisions are you being deceived in or by your pursuits the church in Laodicea was deceived. What do you really, really want out of your life?